There was a car yesterday and their shoe cord actually broke and it ended up causing them to go into the fence a little bit. So that just made us want to double check ours, make sure everything's looking good. Wow. Don't even know what to say. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, honestly, is a video that I have been contemplating on posting. I haven't really shared much on social media. Um, only those who are subscribed to my Instagram know about this and everything that happened. But when it comes to YouTube and everyone else, I have debated tremendously on whether I should share or not. Unfortunately, this video sucks and I wish I didn't have to even post. But I think it's fair. You guys have been a part of the journey and I don't like to hide things. I don't like to sugarcoat things. I feel like everybody deserves to know the truth. And not only that, I mean, shit happens at the end of the day. So I'm here to basically say I crashed my car. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, you'll find out in today's video everything that happened. I know that I'm going to be getting a lot of comments. A lot of people basically putting their two cents in when half of these people are one, aren't drivers. Two, they've never been in the situation that I've been in. And three, they probably have never gone as fast as I have gone. So even though I'm gonna get those comments and I hate to bring it up and even say that, I just wanted to basically share that this is why I haven't said anything at all because I basically had to mentally prepare myself for what's to come, but it is what it is. Let's get started with today's video, guys. the channel today we are here at Bradenton Motorsports Park hoping to get some testing in um, we'll see just how we do today you guys can see I'm wearing a jacket it's pretty chilly but I'm not complaining because usually when we come here it's very hot so I'm enjoying this little cooler weather that we have right now it'll make it more uh, comfortable to be in that race suit today so we'll see how we do I'm hoping I can break a new personal best or really just break my cert on the cage which is 850 so I'm really hoping for that but at the end of the day I'm just gonna be happy to drive the car back on the trailer Hopefully we have no issues today, but regardless of what happens, I'm hoping we just drive back on the trailer with no problem. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm really just ready to get back behind the seat. Um, last time I took the car out was for FL2K. I had such a great time and the car did pretty well. We were running consistent 8.7s. Um, that track definitely is a lot different than Bradenton. So uh, this is actually where I ran my personal best. So I'm hoping today, again, we can achieve the same goal. Also would like to mention guys, I have something new on my Instagram. I'm finally doing a subscription. So if you want to join me today or not even just that in general, be part of my day to day life, be sure to follow me on Instagram and hit the subscribe button because that subscription is going to bring you behind the scenes. You'll get to see everything before it gets posted to YouTube pretty much. So be sure to check it out. Here we have the car where everything's pretty much good to go. Got the battery charging. We just fueled up. We just tested the anti lag. So uh, pretty much pretty much ready to go here. I think the track is hot and ready currently, so I'm gonna go ahead and get changed and we'll make our first pass and see how we do. the car and I don't know what happened. Um, I don't know if it's something 
the strain because the video looks like I put it in a second but it didn't grab so maybe it's just me not tugging it hard enough. My second gear is a little hurt which we knew that coming here but this is just testing so I was just gonna run it. The dogs are slightly rounded but not bad enough to where my second needs to be completely replaced yet so I was like, let's just run it for this test session and then we'll put a brand new second whenever we go for hopefully the next event which was supposed to be Orlando but I don't even know that's gonna happen anymore so we'll see but I mean, nothing I could do but just go and try again and hope that it gets in the second and that it's not second gear that needs to be replaced because I'm gonna be upset and probably regret not doing it when we had the opportunity to, but I, you know, just didn't want to waste parts on a test session. So right now we're just gonna let the car cool down and then I'll go up again and see if I can get a few clean passes today. second was a little hurt but good enough for testing um, we came to realize after my second pass that my shifter box some piece of it came apart so mark from gp1 racing put it back together went for a third hit uh, third hit was much better um, but still have some minor little issues i don't know why second is not going in as much as it should I haven't broken it yet it's still going in i drove it around here earlier in second just to make sure um, that we're having no issues. Didn't pop out, so I don't know. Well, we had parts fall off the shifter Shift inside. Which we didn't even notice. So, so once hit. that happened and you made two shifts because it didn't move, um, at that point, then the shift mechanism on the outside got tweaked because, you know, if the shifter mechanism's not lined up and not moving as it should, two bolts and the washer fell off, so the mechanism didn't do what it was supposed to. Then we damaged the, the shift, shift weight. weight setup. So now we're fixing that. Other than that, everything seems all right. I mean, that's where we're at, and it happens. Even just now, with with the last, well, the third pass, I should say, where it was eight nine at one fifty something. Yeah, you something? just lifted super early, and it didn't. And you still. I'm gonna stay in it, but I know. Did I? Did I shift early? You shifted early, and you clutched. I shifted it. early, and I knew I shifted early. So I, by the time I got to the, I was like, all right, let me just let off at this point. Like I shifted early. There's nothing I can do. So, we'll see how this... Fighting gremlins, that's yep. where we're at. Pretty much, that's no better way to say it than that, I guess. The car still has some little tweaks that it needs to be made to be competing at this level for sure. I want to say a little, a lot of tweaks. <laughs> Basically, a parachute broke off, so I couldn't stop, and I ran right into the fence. <laughs> Scary as hell for sure. Other than my neck, I think I'm okay. <laughs> I don't even know what to say.
So guys, I want to mention, we took a look at the parachute. This parachute honestly has only been pulled probably three times in its entire lifespan, but I did have it on the car for quite some time during the fabrication process and everything in the beginning. So as you guys can see in this video slash picture, there's like a little cover where the strings are and we would have never caught this or seen that it was rotting out or drying out unless we would have pulled the cover back to check. But again, since the parachute has only been pulled a handful of times, we never thought, hmm, let's go ahead and just check the parachute today to see if it's fine. So I don't know, again, how this happened or, or why or anything like that, because it clearly doesn't make any sense since I've only pulled it a few times. But the only explanation is that over time, I guess it just began to deteriorate and we did not notice it. I added the clip in the beginning from the Boosted Boys because they were there. And I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to them for checking on me and just being so supportive. Uh, they pretty much saw the whole thing happen and it's it's insane. Honestly, I'm just grateful. As you guys can see, the car does not have... I'm surprised. I have no idea how it doesn't have that much damage. The main damage was right here in the corner. That's why I don't have my headlight and the bumper obviously is destroyed. Got scratches on the fender, scratches on the hood. I mean, pretty much just going to tear everything apart and see what we can save and what I have to get new. And I'm assuming the windshield just broke from the impact because I did hit like a little concrete pole. Um, but again, man, I'm just grateful that this car is not worse at all. Like this is manageable. We can definitely work with this and fix this compared to what I thought it was going to be. So right now we just have sand literally or dirt, I should say, everywhere from the impact of the crash. But Gotta be grateful for the safety equipment. Luckily, I am pretty much fine. Only thing I have is this on my neck, and I think that is from the seatbelts. It is a little sore, but other than that, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that I have no issues. I can turn my head. It's pretty happy, and again, the car is fixable. Um, not as sad as I was yesterday, because honestly, I was gonna tear this car apart regardless. It needs so many more changes to compete competitively. I'm just sad that it happened in this matter. I didn't want this to happen. I was trying to break the cert on the cage. For replacing the cage but it looks like we're just gonna have to skip all that and go directly to the rebuilding process guys so there you have it here is the civic pretty much going to be starting over back to square one um this was going to have to happen regardless i'm just very sad that it happened the way that it did it wasn't supposed to happen this way but my goal was to run 850 and then because that's what the cage is certified for i just wanted to run that number since my pb was 866 and ironically i literally went 866 on this pass but it was my fastest mile per hour yet i went 178 miles per hour I'll show you guys the time slip here. Um, and that was a shitty pass. It was extremely shitty. Second, third, it was, the car was breaking up. We were literally fighting gremlins, as Randy mentioned in the beginning of the video. And unfortunately, those gremlins got, got the best of the car, which is crazy. I have no idea how the parachute broke like that. Like, that is just something that really does not... You don't see that happening. But you know what? I'm, it is what it is. Um, nothing I can do but move forward from here. Next thing to do, we're going to take the car to a frame shop. I just want to make sure that nothing's bent. We do think that we're going to have to make some adjustments. Um, I don't think the frame is completely straight, honestly. Randy pulled the log, and it looks like I hit at 89 miles per hour. I was trying so hard to slow the damn car down, and all I had was my foot brake and hand brake, and it could only do so much. Definitely couldn't slow down a car going 178. And Bradenton has a very, very short shutdown, so I couldn't stop it. There's nothing I could have done. I did the best that I could, and I'm guess i'm just glad it turned out the way it did the car's not as bad i feel like if i would have hit it straight on we'd have so much more damage and a lot of the stuff will be pushed in luckily it doesn't seem too bad but i'm gonna have to redo a lot of stuff once i put in that new 750 cage there's gonna be bars going into the bay so the car's honestly guys gonna be getting completely redone completely redone because once i put those bars in there they're gonna have to shave all this paint so i'm gonna have to get the paint redone i mean the whole cage is gonna get scrapped out it did its job. Luckily, on this pass, like I said, it, it saved me. It protected me. Um, I'm fine. Like I said, the only thing I had was that little little uh, seatbelt rash on my neck. But other than that, we're okay. So it sucks. I'm very bummed. Um, honestly, I debated on sharing this because I'm like, man, 
no matter what I do, people are going to be like, this is your fault, or you could have saved it, or you could have done that, or you're a shitty driver. And But I had to realize that the negativity is going to come no matter what. No matter what I do, I could literally run, be the fastest Honda, the fastest sport front, and I'm still going to get something for it. Oh, it's only because of this or because of that or because, you know, being on social media in general, you have to be prepared and honestly just not even pay attention to the negativity because it's always there. And I feel like it doesn't matter who you are, what you do. You could be a freaking doctor for a living and I build this and, and it's just crazy. It's crazy and it's sad the way the world is right now. And, you know, like I said, I'm contemplating on sharing because I know the kind of feedback that I will be getting. But at the end of the day, like I said, it is what it is. Nothing I can do about it. Um, I'm just grateful to be here. I'm grateful the car is not as bad as um, it may have seemed in those photos and in the video. It's actually not too crazy. So we're going to get it all checked out, make sure the frame is straight. Um, and then from there, we'll be taking the cage out, getting the car cut, and then we'll take it to the fabricator to do the whole new cage. And the process will begin from there. So at least I'm not starting 100% from scratch. Engine setup and everything will pretty much be the same. I do have my engine that I will be taking to JBR to have it looked at because, again, the car kept breaking up. and We don't really know what's going on. It's just insane. Like, I did not have it easy when it came to this this build. The moment we went onto the track, it was issue after issue after issue, and it's just so many little things. Um, but at the end of the day, like, this was a street car. It was a street car that turned into a sport front car, but it wasn't done the right way. I don't have enough weight in the front on this weight plate to catch traction, so my tuner was literally having me... Uh, launch the car at a very low boost pretty much because to avoid spinning so we're going to be changing a lot of things and the car's going to be done the right way to compete competitively in this field so i don't know how long this is going to take i mean ideally i would hope for everything to be done by march i hope that when march comes we're wrapping things up we can hit the dyno and i can do a few test sessions because i really 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 want to start competing next year i don't want to take another year of just testing but again we'll see what happens we'll, we'll see if i can meet that timeline in the end, it really doesn't come to me. It comes to the fabricator who's going to be doing the cage. Um, it comes to the engine. It comes to so many little things that have to get done that are not in my hands. Once the cage is done and I have the car back, it's all on me. I can put that together, put the, the new doors on. It's going to have a whole new look, a whole new look. And I'm excited for it. Again, it sucks that it ended this way, but it could have been much worse. And I'm grateful that it wasn't. So we'll see. So stay tuned. We're going to have V3 for the Civic, a whole new look coming up. So I hope to have you a part of it. Thank you guys for supporting. Thank you for watching the channel. I started a new thing on Instagram where you can subscribe because I'm going to be posting all the updates. You guys are going to be able to see the new wrap that I'm choosing. I am planning to wrap the car. I absolutely love, love, love the blue, but there are too many people right now in the industry in the same field with blue cars. And I'm tired of getting people getting confused with them. And I just want something that says me. Um, even though, again, the blue is absolutely beautiful. I don't want to get rid of it, so I'm just going to wrap it for the next season to, to have a different look and just switch it up a bit. So subscribe to my Instagram. I think I only have it for $4.99 right now. I'll be posting all the behind the scenes everywhere I go. You'll, you'll be seeing everything, all first steps when it comes to the car and also the Evo. We have some stuff coming up for that. The Evo has not been on the channel for a while because I've been waiting on some parts, but they officially came in. So after Thanksgiving, I'll be getting everything all together and um, we'll go from there. So, whew. Crazy weekend, guys. Crazy weekend. Literally was at the track Friday. That happened. Saturday tore the whole entire car apart. It's been one hell of a weekend, but you know what? This is all a learning experience, and I'm glad I'm taking from it, and I just can't wait to get back out there. So we'll see how long this takes. Either way, you know, you guys will be a part of the journey. I'll be recording everything that I can. So thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you guys. I'll catch you on the next video.